white. In the X-ray frequencies, they look even more dramatic. Huge plumes of superheated gas spout from the spots. When you're seeing the visible, you're really seeing the surface of the sun. But when you see the ultraviolet or the X-rays, you're actually seeing that very hot atmosphere, and that's about a million degrees, whereas the surface is about 6,000 degrees. So you're seeing a different part of the sun, and you're seeing a part um, that's constantly changing. These phenomenal displays of solar power were only discovered in the 1970s by the astronauts on Skylab. No one had seen the sun like this before. Since then, a number of space telescopes have been deployed whose sole purpose is to look at the sun. The most used is SOHO, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. It sits a million miles away from the Earth, at the Lagrangian point, where the gravitational pull from the Earth and the sun is equal. Fixed in space, it has an uninterrupted view of the sun and its tantrums. It has completely transformed our understanding. You can essentially see right from inside the sun right through to the coronal mass ejections as they're leaving the sun, so you're seeing way out to 30 solar radii. SOHO has played a key role in understanding the explosive power of the sun. By blocking out the disk, it simulates an eclipse, revealing the outer atmosphere and the true scale of the sun's largest eruptions. These are solar flares and coronal mass ejections, and they erupt from the heart of sunspots. The temperatures in a solar flare will be tens of millions of degrees. So it's an extremely hot, very dramatic change in temperature over a short period of time. When they erupt completely, you can get masses which are roughly the mass of Mount Everest being flung out into the solar system. At solar minimum, flares are infrequent. But every 11 years when the cycle peaks at solar max, the sun puts on the best firework display in the solar system. Solar astronomers are now beginning to understand the cause of these explosions. They are not caused by the power of fusion. There is another force at work. It is the force of magnetism. The sun is covered in a complex network of magnetic fields. A magnetic map shows a familiar patchwork on the face of the sun. The areas of the strongest fields coincide exactly with the position of sunspots. Here, the magnetic field strength can be amplified 10,000 times. It turns out that the, the regions of the strongest magnetic field on the sun are in the in sunspots, and in the units that we use, sunspot magnetic fields are roughly 1,000, 2,000, maybe 3,000 gauss. But if you look at magnets like the ones I'm playing with here, the magnetic field in these magnets is about 1,000 to 1,500 gauss. So these have roughly the same magnetic field strength as a sunspot. The key difference, of course, is that a sunspot is an awful lot bigger, and so the total energy or the amount of energy in the magnetic field on the sun is enormous. But the field strength in any given location is something you can hold in your hand. Sunspots are just the visible effect of magnetic fields so strong that they can prevent the heat and light rising from the sun's interior.
With the right viewing equipment, you can even see the magnetic fields. Magnetic loops arch off the surface. Like iron filings around a bar magnet, their shapes are mapped out by plasma heated to a million degrees. The largest are 200,000 kilometers high, and they are packed full of unstable energy. When you add up the total energy content in these loops, it comes out to roughly 10 to the 21 joules of energy, and that's roughly 10 times the annual energy consumption of the United States. Of course, we can see thousands of them at any one time. The loops are caused by the twisting of the sun's basic magnetic field. Because the sun rotates faster at the equator than at the poles, it drags the field lines with it, stretching and twisting them like elastic bands. As the solar cycle goes on, the fields get more and more twisted and break through the surface. Until at solar max, the whole sun is covered in loops stretched to breaking point. Solar flares are what happen when the strain gets too much and the loops snap. Basically all that energy comes out of the catastrophic release of energy that's been stored in the magnetic field. So like if you wind up an elastic band too much, if you let it go with your fingers, that elastic band flies across the room. energy bound within sunspots is released. Billions of tons of plasma are fired far into space at huge speeds. And sometimes they are aimed straight for the Earth. The flares fly through space for two days. When they reach us, the Earth's own magnetic field deflects most of the blow. But it is the impact on the magnetic field which affects the Earth. It's called space weather, and the best of its effects are magical. The auroras, dancing displays of celestial light, are caused by particles from the solar storm smashing through the magnetic field at the poles. When they strike the upper atmosphere, they light up the polar skies. In the strongest storms at the peak of the solar cycle, the northern lights can be seen as far south as Athens and Cuba. But the buffeting of the magnetic field has other unseen effects. Migratory animals that navigate using the magnetic field can lose their bearings. Racing pigeons don't come home. And whale strandings have been seen to increase with solar activity. But most worryingly for us is the effect that the disrupted magnetic field can have on electronics. The strongest storms can damage or destroy satellites with devastating effects. We're sort of more sensitive to the sun than we probably realize because when the sun releases these, this magnetic energy in the form of solar flares and, and coronal mass ejections, maybe you don't notice it at first, but um, a little crackle on your cell phone or your cell phone going out may actually be caused by enhanced activity on the sun. Mobile telephones, television, aeroplane navigation, even weapons guidance systems all rely on satellite communication.